I'll get started here. I plugged my Theta in to my MacBook and <clears throat> it's going to automatically pull up the native program for photos. Um, I'd prefer to use image capture, but I was having some problems yesterday uh, with image capture messing up the video. It just it would crash every time I tried it. Um, image capture is going to let me take these files and put them right into a particular folder, which is great. Uh, Apple Photos requires me to put the the file in their system, and then when I want access to it in Finder. I've got to export it. So I'm going to show you the more difficult route. If you're using image capture and you're able to get that to work, you can sort of skip ahead a little bit. So I've gone ahead and I've selected a video and I'm going to import that particular video into Apple Photos. Okay, uh, so once my videos have been imported, uh, you can see here that they, uh, they've come in not stitched together. So they come in with the two spherical balls next to each other and this is just the direct feed from each of the lens and so we have to solve that problem uh, by taking them through the Theta app and before we can do that in fact we need to get them out of um, I we need to get them out of Apple Photos so let me find a short clip this doesn't take too long here's one so I'm gonna select the clip that I want to export and I'm gonna go to file export export unmodified original which means basically means we're not going to compress the file or change it in any way we just want that that video file so I'm going to select that I'm going to leave all these settings the same essentially it's going to maintain its file name which is fine and then once I hit export it's actually going to give me my my finder option so I can give it a location and I'm going to put it in this folder and hit export uh, it's going to let me know when that's completed. So the next step here is that we need to use the Theta app that you can get from Theta360.com and you can download for free. And what the Theta app is going to do is it's going to take uh, it's going to take these two spheres and it's going to stitch them together and make them look flat like this. So we want something that looks like this when we get into our editing software right now the video was imported like this okay so we're gonna go over to our Theta app and it says drag and drop spherical image here so we're gonna go to our finder and I'm gonna navigate to the folder where I brought that file in and here's the file that we imported and when I preview it I can see that it's still split into two spheres so I'm gonna take that file and I'm gonna drag it into my Rico Theta app and it's going to ask me where I want to place this. Um, it's going to offer me up the same file location. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to make a new file that stitches those two things together and it's asking me where do I want to put it. And it gives me the same directory as the source directory. Um, and I can, I can choose to change the name here if I want. It's going to add this little ER to the end and that's kinda how you know that it's been stitched together into that rectangular shape instead of the two spheres so unless you wanted to come up with your own naming convention you can just leave this alone and know that if it has the ER on it then it's ready to go so once I hit start it's going to convert my video for me okay so it's done converting my video and it plays it automatically um, one thing you need to know about a spherical video is that it takes a while to render because there's a lot going on. Um, so this conversion step here where we stitch the two spheres into the rectangular view uh, when it's flat, uh, you, you want to leave some time for that. So I suggest doing that step when you've got some free time and you can let your computer just run. Okay, so we've converted the file. It now actually lives in our uh, that same folder here. This is that Zion folder I showed you, uh, and this is the file that it outputted. And we can see here when we preview that now the file has been stretched flat instead of uh, the two spheres that we started with, uh, and that's that's really important for editing and. Uh, 
for exporting. So we've got our file ready to go. I'm gonna move over to my favorite editing software, which is Premiere Pro, but you could do the same thing in uh, iMovie, I do believe, because really the only thing you don't wanna do uh, is is change the, the dimensions of the file. So if we were editing an iMovie, when you import the file, you, if it just ever asks you, do you wanna do you want to change this file to a new aspect ratio? You just say no. So I'm going to import that file into my um, my project here, and there it is, right at the top. And the way that I make sure I don't change anything about this file when editing in Premiere is that I I I basically use the file itself to create the sequence. So if you drop a file onto the blank timeline panel in Adobe, it will create a sequence that matches that file exactly in terms of bitrate and size. So here we can see our, um, our file flattened out. And so now that we have the file in the timeline, we can really treat this like video as it is, uh, like it's a normal flat video. Um, except that we don't want to add any titles because our titles when stitched back together aren't going to be uh, the correct size. You actually need special software for doing that. So at this point, this is when we might add ourselves a little bit of music into the track. So this is a music track that I've added. Um, and I just know right away we want to turn that way down. Uh, and so now I've got a little music file there on the floor we can add in. Looks great. Uh, one thing you can do is add transitions. So I can add uh, a fade in and a fade out of my video file. That's not going to hurt anything. That's just messing with the feed. Um, and then I can trim this clip up. And I can put some transitions on there. And we're good to go. So now I've added some music. We have our video, uh, and we're ready to export. So I'm going to open up my file export menu, command M. And this is where I want to make sure, again, that I don't change anything. You know, over here, we have the option of formatting this video for our output model. So if I were going to, you know, if I knew I was putting this on YouTube or anything, really don't do anything because you don't want to change the size of it. Just hit match source bitrate and everything will work itself out. Make sure your format up here is H.264 uh, and then you can give it a new file name. Um, it's not important that the file has the ER in it. That's not an important thing. That's just something that the software did for you to let you know uh, that it has been flattened. So um, this was at a roadside market in Tecate. They were cutting up carnitas. So I'm going to name this Carnitas 360. And I'm going to hit save, put it in that folder, and I'm going to hit export. Okay, so we've exported the video file just like we would just about any other file. And we're ready to upload to YouTube, except that... In the process of editing and then re-exporting our video file, we have essentially stripped away some important metadata. So the video, the website that I'm showing you here, uh, is a a little thing from YouTube about how to put that metadata back in. Essentially, when the internet looks at our video, there needs to be special data that's behind the scenes that tells. Chrome or Firefox or whatever browser or app that we're using that the file itself is in fact a 360 video and to use a different codec when showing it to the user so that they can you know if they have the gyroscope on their device they can move around and look at it or if it's gonna be a click and drag you know like on a computer that 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 is enabled um, and so essentially this is a little step-by-step on uh, creating your video and then preparing for upload and it says that we need to download the 360 video metadata app and it's completely free and that little app looks like this and it's called the spatial media metadata injector 
So this step is probably the easiest of all the steps. Um, this software is incredibly easy to use. Uh, we're going to click the open button and that's going to give us access to uh, our finder again. We're going to select the, the file that we made and hit open. And then we're going to check the, the boxes for spherical. Now, don't check the 3D top-down box. Uh, that's not going to be what you want. Um, and you'd, you'd only be able to, to check the spatial audio if you had spatial audio. Spatial audio is essentially, um, if I were to look right, it, it, I would hear what's over on my right and look left. I would hear different things because I'm turning my head in that space. Um, you need special equipment to record spatial audio. So for us and for Theta users and for most folks, you're just going to check the spherical box and then you're going to hit save as. So yes, we are going to make another file type. Um, and, and this time the software wants to add the word injected. And uh, if, if you're okay with the word injected being on there, then you'll know that if you have a file that says injected, then that is a ready to upload to Facebook or YouTube file. So I'm okay with that. Um, again, the word injected doesn't have to be in the file name. It's just something the software is doing for you so that it's more obvious to you that this file has gone through the software. So I'm just going to leave it as is and hit save. Um, and it's it's successfully done that. It's not really making um, much more than a copy of the file and then adding some data to it. So in the for the sake of file management, um, you may find yourself wanting to get rid of some of these other videos. Uh, so for example, the pre-injected video, uh, this 360 MP4, if this were longer, like for example here I did a hiking video, uh, it's a gig and a half and I have two of them because I wanted to upload one. There's no difference between these two besides the metadata and if I were viewing them on my computer there would be no difference. So I really uh, am, it's not going to hurt me to go ahead and just get rid of these. I can always re-export them from my original file as long as I've kept, like you can see here, I've gone ahead and kept the original ER file. To that same point, the file that I originally pulled in from the camera, remember way back when? The file that has just the two spheres? I don't need to keep that file either unless I like those two spheres. I can go ahead and delete this file as well. And that's going to save me some space if you're fighting for hard drive space. So now that I have uh, gone through that process, when you go to upload to Facebook or when you go to upload to YouTube, you're all ready to go. All you need to remember is that you're going to upload the injected file. All right. I hope that's been helpful uh, and good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.